first part, I have a series of questions that I'll moderate and, and ask of, of the folks on the panel. And uh, we'll kind of work around the table uh, as we do that. Um, and then once that's uh, done, uh, we will then kind of break out into, um, into smaller groups. There are, of course, the classroom that everybody likes down this hallway with the couches in it. Okay, one, Jessica, Jessica's already claiming that one. Um, and then there are three classrooms down this hallway that have lights on and, ta and chairs set up. And then we'll, we'll leave one, one of our panelists here. And then what we'll do is we'll split up into groups and give you guys in small groups the opportunity to, uh, to interact on a, on a more one-on-one -on -one basis with, with a panelist um, that basically strikes your interest in terms of what he does um, or um, some of the things that he said or, or taught that you can glean from. <clears throat> Typically the way we do this is we give seniors first dibs um, and then juniors and then sophomores and freshmen. Um, guys who are freshmen, don't despair, you'll eventually be seniors and uh, you'll get first dibs as well. Um, we would like to limit, uh, given, given the number of folks, um, to 10 in a, in a room with, with um, everybody at max. Uh, preferably about eight is, is an ideal number uh, for us to break up between the, between the five panelists, okay? All right, let me go ahead and begin by introducing our, our panelists. Um, our first panelist um, on, the, on your left-hand side of the table uh, is Mr. Wayne Rittenauer. Uh, he is, um, uh, he's got kids involved with the school and things like that. He's a businessman, and I think he'll share a little bit more of his experiences uh, with you um, as he goes along. Um, next to him is uh, Mr. Ralph Pierce. Uh, he's a uh, physician's assistant, uh, which basically means that he is a doctor who does everything that a doctor does, except he doesn't have that fancy little title at the end of his name. Um, in the middle of the table is Todd Doyle. Uh, he is a friend of mine uh, from Mobile Bay. Uh, so he's I've traveled. got stories. Um, yeah, uh, he's got some stories. Doesn't he? For cash, um, right. Uh, he uh, is um, probably my closest friend from seminary. He is a, um, uh, well, he's a drug and alcohol counselor, but it's been expanding out and more into family counseling, um, but he is also a writer. He's published his first novel, and he is working on a second, um, and um, I think he'll share a little bit about that um, uh, with you. Um, then next at the table is Mr. Stephen Kent. Uh, Mr. Kent is, is the owner and, and editor of the Bay Beacon newspaper, our local paper, um, so it gives you a chance to interact with him. And then at the end of the table is Pastor Joe Greider, who is pastor at First Pres uh, right down the road here um, at Niceville, okay, or in Niceville. All right, let's go ahead and begin with our panel discussion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work down the table, and I'm going to ask each of you to, uh, to answer um, the first question, and uh, then we'll just kind of move down the table and kind of, kind of go from, from there. So... The, the first question is, who is it that played the most significant role uh, in your choice of vocations? Mr. Rittenauer, if you would like to go ahead and Great. Glad I begin. The first two. <laughs> <laughs> well, first I want to say thank you, and uh, for, you know, I'm honored and humbled to be here. And, and uh, I have two boys at Rocky, uh, Liam and Lon, and uh, one's in fifth grade and one's in fourth grade. And... and uh, they they uh, they were very kind to email us these questions before we got here so we could think about them and and, and I would have to say this is probably one of the most difficult questions at least for me um, because I'm 41 years old and I have five kids and I'm on my fifth career and uh, uh, and so you know I think that in different stages of my life different people affected uh, my decisions on, on what I was going to do. And, and I would have to say, and, and you guys are going to laugh, that as I have gotten older, although I'm, I don't consider myself old, uh, um, the, the folks that have probably the most influence in my life today about whether I, uh, what I do and don't do, because really what I do is I buy and sell uh, businesses and uh, turn them around and sell them. And so uh, are my parents. Uh, and I would have to say that the least influential people in my life when I first began were my parents because I chose not to listen to them. And uh, my parents were old-fashioned, 
they didn't know what they were talking about. My dad dressed like a geek. Uh, you know, I didn't want to talk to him. You know, dad's not like that anymore. You know, this is this is 1986, Dad, not 19. That's when I graduated from high school. The uh, uh, you just don't know what's going on. But as I've matured and grown uh, and had to, uh, kids of my own, and now I get to say uh, all the things that my parents said, well, you just don't understand. Uh, uh, it's a really simple question. Is uh, my mom and dad and my father probably now have the most influence? It's because I've matured and listened to them. Uh, is, is, is my answer to that question. Mr. Pierce? Uh, who played the most significant role in the choice? Uh, probably, probably God did. Now, that's a big general answer. But uh, my parents really didn't push me toward this. I was interested in medicine and and uh, they're always just very encouraging. Mr. Renauer says, I mean, they're, they're always influential. But it was kind of like, well, just do whatever you want to do, whatever you're interested in, whatever makes you happy, that kind of thing. But, um, and I just started pursuing along that line, and God eventually kept opening doors. So I guess ultimately that's, uh, that's uh, the most significant role. No, there's no person, no, like, uh, lightning bolt experience or somebody I met that, oh, this is... But I remember the only thing I can recall was... Uh, seeing in Life magazine in 1968 when they're talking about this new heart transplants, uh, Christian Bernard, if you remember that, I remember seeing that thing, oh, that's pretty interesting, pretty fascinating, because so that kind of got my interest peak. So you should read, you should look in magazines, the right kind, of course, and uh, let, expose yourself to things, and you never know what's going to pique your interest, what's going to catch your attention, uh, something like that. Who, who knows? And something like that just kind of captured my thoughts and my imagination and kind of went on from there. But... Um, but I'm sure this was many pieces and parts of people that along the way that encouraged me and taught me. And, uh, I can't identify one person, but uh, just again, it's the, ta the tapestry of what God uh, weaves in your life. Mr. Doyle? Uh, uh, first of all, I would, I would like to thank you, uh, Wynn, for inviting me, and um, I I'm, I'm truly blessed and honored to be here today. Uh, golly gee. <coughs> uh, it, it's. The email that you sent me, the questions weren't on there. I forgot to say that to you last night. <laughs> so I'm kind of spinning here. So bear with me. All right. Now um, the list of questions is on is in front of you underneath. Yeah, I've got I've got, but the, the ones you sent me last night didn't show up, so I, I didn't get a chance to read them. Um, the who played the most significant role in your choice of vocations? Uh, that's an awesome question, um, and I would have to say that, um, well, let me ask you a question first. Raise your hand if you believe in the sovereignty of God. Okay. Raise your hand if you believe in God's providence. Okay. Then, you will understand very clearly when I say God plays the most significant role in the choice of your vocations. He does. Okay. Um, me personally, uh, I grew up in a family that was um, rather tempestuous. Uh, my father was a hard man, um, and my sister was born with spina bifida. Um, and so I had a rather, rather difficult upbringing. Um, and I was, I, I remember very clearly being your age, but I was one of those gloomy teenagers who uh, the world hated and nobody wanted anything to do with me, and I was a geek, and I hated athletes, and, 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 and athletes hated me, and, and I got picked on, and, you know, so what ended up happening is I got depressed, and I got suicidal, and then the next thing I know, my parents come to me, and they say, we'd like for you to see somebody. I was like, okay, I'll see somebody. They took me to a Christian counselor. And this woman, when she first saw me, uh, walk into her office, she later admitted to me, she said, when I first saw you and you walked in my office, I, I thought this is a lost <coughs> cause. This, is, this guy's a lost cause. I'm, gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to see him again. <coughs> Why? Because I was dressed in complete black, black sunglasses, um, black boots, black jeans, black everything black. I was goth before goth was goth. Okay.